Thanks for joining us today on the Faith Ignited channel. I'm Michael Bridges, Executive Pastor at Faith Ignited, and I am with Aaron Chippington. Aaron is our, our Senior Pastor at Faith Ignited. We love to tackle questions, and today, Aaron, we've got a couple couple questions. Yes, yes. And before we get there, if you would uh, just go and click the uh, subscribe button on the YouTube channel, that'll help us and uh, help more people see this. And, and we invite you to send us questions as well. We're having lots of fun with this. And, and we think we're engaging people in a, in a way that's right where they're at. Like, they, these are the things that I'm wrestling with, especially what we're handling with these two questions today. Yes, exactly. So, our first question here, and this person writes, I've been going through a lot lately. I just lost someone close to me. I'm really struggling. I want to know what happens when we die. Yeah, so, I want to start with what is a biblical worldview. And what we mean by that is, is how does God, Jesus specifically, want us to see the world? How did Jesus understand death? And then I'm going to move out from there. And I'm going to get, gain that from reading John 11. So if you're at home and you're going, hey, where is he getting this information? John 11 has a story of Lazarus. And it starts out with Jesus is out of town. Lazarus has gotten sick. Mary and Martha send word to Jesus. Hey, this guy, your, your closest friend, it actually says the one you love, has become ill. And... Jesus' disciples get word and they expect Jesus to get up immediately and rush to him because Jesus has healed all kinds of other people. He's going to heal Lazarus, right? And what we see is that Jesus just kind of sits still. And then about a couple days later, he says, uh, hey, it's time to go to Bethany to see Lazarus. He's fallen asleep. And the disciples are like, well, if he's asleep, he's going to get better, Lord. Let's, let's not go there. And Jesus says, no, you guys don't understand. He's, he's dead. Now, one of the things that I think is interesting is that, that when you look at, again, the Greek and all that's around that, it really is the word sleep. And so how does Jesus view death? Basically, he says, death's like taking a nap. You're going to wake up and... If, again, if you're a believer, and I need to put that in here, right. if, you're if you're a follower of Christ, yes. you're going to wake up and be in heaven. And uh, if you're not, then, again, you're going to be quarantined. You're going to be self-quarantined. You've chosen, I don't want to be with God, so God won't force you to be with him in heaven. Right. Uh, but for those who choose to follow Jesus, they're going to wake up from a nap and be with God. And that's how Jesus describes death. We see other glimpses where, <clears throat> I don't know if those are specifically to that individual or not, where Jesus is on the cross and he says to the thief, today you will be with me in paradise. And the reason I bring that up is because, in all honesty, there's still some debate like, hey, when we die, are we immediately in heaven? Or is there like a small time period that we won't even notice that we're, we're holding off? Uh, is there a Sheol that's in the Old Testament, a holding place? Uh, and so, in fairness, there is some ambiguity in the Scripture. But what we do know is that Jesus' view of death was he took a nap. Uh, and this is a big deal because before Jesus, there's this uh, Greek uh, view of death that it's the end. Yes. And so the young lady, and, and I spent a lot of time talking with her on the phone the other day, but but. You might even have this fear. Like, this is the reason why death bothers us, because what if we got it wrong? What if it is the end? And the reality of it is, is that we read Scripture, we study this, we study the apologetics of critical thinking, because we want to gather in all the evidence that we can in order to make an informed decision. And death is not the end. And Jesus very clearly said, hey, it's a nap, and I'm going to wake you up. And the story of Lazarus, the whole thing is a foreshadowing of the resurrection, which I think is absolutely beautiful. And of course, you have all kinds of passages in Revelation that describe heaven and what it's going to look like. But when we just talk about death, uh, it really is just this momentary movement from this life into your next life. And one of my favorite authors likens it as you went through a doorway. You didn't cease to live. You don't cease to exist. In fact, you just transition from one state of life where you have an imperfect body to the state of life where you get a absolutely perfect body. Now, the other piece of this that we, we can't ignore is that, therefore, 
what we believe about Jesus is crucial. And because Jesus is either the salvation or he is the world's most horrific and evil liar. Because what Jesus says is if you want to get to heaven, it's through me, I am the gate, you have to put all your trust in me. And so once again, we come to that, the, the, the real crux is do we believe not only in Jesus' words that it is a nap, but do we believe in Jesus that he is the gate, that he is the way? So Aaron, can I ask you, um, one of the things we can't do with scripture is treat it like we've gone to a salad bar. Right, we're gonna take a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, and a little bit of this. If, if, we, if, we, if we have our eyes on Christ in this lifetime, we have to accept what he said about our, our future things. Absolutely. Well, the big word for that is eschatology. And he, he taught us, just as you said, about heaven and about the fact that we're taking a nap or walking through a door, and we have to trust in that. Right. So to trust in Jesus during our lifetime, to accept him, and, and then to not, to not understand or believe all of the promises that he's made for us for eternity would be a disservice to, to God, to Jesus, and to his word. Right. And so key, as always, is seeking the understanding that comes from Scripture. And what you shared is, is scriptural. Right. And, and, and again, this is where, what has formed your worldview of death? Was it the movies out of Hollywood? Yes. Was it the fairy tales? Was it grandma and grandpa? Uh, or is it is it God's word that has helped you understand this is what happens when you die, this is what death looks like? And again, over and over again in scripture, we see evidence of, of yeah, when you die, you don't cease to exist. I mean, at the transfiguration, Jesus is talking with Moses and Elijah, who clearly were dead, but are there present with them right now, and in such a way that the disciples read their name tags and went, oh, that's Moses and Elijah. Uh, and so, again, over and over again, we see what forms your worldview, period, or anything, but death is one of those moments where, again, that Christian worldview formation, that biblical worldview, allowing the scripture to form what I think and believe is crucial because it tells me what happens when I die. Aaron, one thing I wanna ask you today is that what you just described, and rightly so, is that transition from, from our earthly life to our heavenly life as Christians. Yes. You made it sound really reassuring that it's, it's gonna be fine, and I agree with you. However, God gave us all the desire and the will to live. Right. He wants us here. He does not want us taking the easy way out and right. committing suicide. We, in fact, we talked about that a while back on some other questions about that. But he has a plan for us. Mm -hmm. And so even though, even though we know that there's actually something greater for us that lies ahead of us in the future with, with Jesus, he doesn't want us taking into our own hands the end of our life here. Right. Right? We want you to expound on that. You know, I, I mean, you thought you did a good job. We, we are here with a purpose. And again, when we take our own life, we're, we're, we're missing the purpose that God has created us for. And this is just one of those moments where Sometimes God's calling to our life is to work through the pain we're going through. That's part of growing up, and and there's no way to put it as a fun moment. I mean, there's no. I mean, again, the way, reason we go through it is because we know that there's an end goal. We know that that God is still in control, and that He is a God of love and calls us to a purpose of love, but doesn't promise prosperity or health or wholeness or. Again, this sense of, of, hey, everything's gonna be fine. In fact, sometimes, uh, you know, God reminds me of the line from Behind Enemy Lines, the movie, like, I intend you to send you into harm's way. Yes. And that's, that's more in line with what Jesus' message was to his disciples, rather than, hey, I'm gonna take care of you, nothing bad's gonna happen. But Jesus' line is, I, hey, look, yes. if you follow me, look what the world did to me, it's gonna treat you the same. I've also heard, you know, God's primary intention was not for us to be happy, it's right. to be holy. Right. Not that he wants us unhappy, but but his whole goal is to draw us closer to him through through holiness. Right. And so I, I, I guess I would close by just saying to this person, this is where reading your scripture is important and allowing, again, the, the Bible to inform you. That, and therefore, being part of Bible studies or church attendance and participation, uh, as well as your own scripture reading is important. 
uh, again, what are you listening to and watching on, on YouTube and your podcast? And if you're watching this, again, we're, we're helping you form a biblical worldview. Uh, and in that, spend some time in prayer and invite the God who comforts, the yeah. God who walks with, with us through the valley of the shadow of death. Again, it's not that Christians are immune to fear or immune to, to hurt and pain. It's that even when we're going through that, we have a comforter knowing that God is with us. And I absolutely believe that God walks us hand in hand. And I have been there at the bedside of people who literally say, I've seen, and it's a loved one they've lost, or they, they literally say they've seen some kind of angelic figure, or even the Son of God. And, and it's just minutes then before they pass away. And I'm a big believer that God welcomes us hand in hand into the next life as faithful servants. And we get to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. So spend some time thinking on that, pondering that, and again, allowing God to minister to you in the midst of hurt. And again, don't forget, we have people around who can help you. Amen, amen. And Aaron, just one more thing I'd love for you to, to chat about is that um, the significance of the fact that we do all have, with the worldview, we all have a worldview, whether we choose to be with Christ or choose not to be with Christ. That worldview is the fork in the road for our eternity. And so each person that we encounter, it, you, me, everyone in my family, your family, everyone is going to face that fork in the road sometime in their life. And if they choose not to accept Christ and choose not to take that turn in the direction of Christ and face him and give our, give our lives to Christ, we are destined to go down the other path, yeah. which is the path that says we don't want to be a part of the kingdom of God. And for eternity, we will not be a part of that. Right. And so as we as we face people who we know have not committed their lives to Christ, the significance of eternity is with them. And we may be the only Jesus they ever see. Yeah. And, and we get we and so that's a weight we carry as Christians to never leave anyone behind right. to the extent that we can. And we ourselves cannot bring people to Christ. We can point people to Christ. Right. The Holy Spirit then can move people to Christ and they can accept him. It's just so significant though. It cannot be, uh, it's just, it's, it's such an important thing that we all Christians should, the weight we all should bear for our fellow mankind that do not know Christ. Yep. Well said. Thank you. You have time for another question? Or maybe we'll put that off for another day. We'll like to do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll hold off on that. Okay. Well, hey, thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, we really appreciate you checking out our website at www.faithignited.church. We have a brand new website for you. Like us on Facebook and YouTube and send us your questions. Thanks very much.